But speaking of the price we're going to pay, to something that should have blown up Labor's campaign today because it exposed the danger of Labor's catastrophic global warming policies. Yet as far as I could tell, the Prime Minister today was not asked a single question about it. What blindness. Just six days ago, Spain boasted it had powered its entire grid for the first time with 100% renewable energy. It's the green dream. Wind, solar, hydro, that, no coal or nasty gas. But yesterday, Spain and Portugal suffered the biggest blackout in history, at least European history. Both countries completely losing electricity and for hours. People couldn't use computers. They couldn't catch trains or planes. They couldn't charge their phones. In many cases, they couldn't even use them anyway. Stoplights were out, factories closed, total chaos. Now, there's been lots of theories for this. We still don't know the full story. Uh, was it a cyber attack or maybe extreme weather events, even though Madrid was just 23 degrees, so you couldn't blame that. But now experts say, uh-uh. This disaster was most likely, we don't know for sure, was most likely caused by too much renewable power. Unreliable power that wasn't backed up by enough reliable power like coal or gas or nuclear to keep the system stable and stop it crashing. Just before the blackout, which started in Spain, problem is Spain also supplies a lot of Portugal's power, the Spanish grid was using around 70% renewable energy. And then, bang, there's some kind of fluctuation. A lot of power suddenly dropped in just five minutes. System couldn't handle that. The whole system tripped. And because Spain relies on so much wind and solar, there wasn't enough stable power of the kind you get from nuclear, coal and gas to restart the system fast. And remember, this is when Spain was using 70% renewables. Anthony Albanese promises to make Australia's grid use not 70, but 82% renewables just five years from now. But now we see the great, great danger. Now, before we get to the crazy political risk Labor is taking with their electricity, let's quickly hear from an expert on the engineering factors here. Tony Irwin has commissioned and operated eight nuclear reactors in Britain. He was also the first reactor manager for Australia's only nuclear plant, at Lucas Heights. Tony Irwin, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, we've heard various theories about why Spain and Portugal were blacked out for hours. Not much firm information. There's a, a cyber attack. I'm not sure that's likely. That one theory, a mysterious disappearance of the Spanish Prime Minister of lots of electricity in just five seconds that tripped the system. Others have said, oh, look, there are temperature rises, even though Madrid was just a nice 23 degrees. And I think the one of the power suppliers said extreme oscillation. Look, uh, who knows? What do you think happened in layman's terms? Well, we're looking at Portugal. Just before the incident, Portugal had 44% solar, 22% um, wind, and 40% import from Spain. So they were highly dependent on Spain for the stability of their system. So when they ha have the big problem in Spain, they lost that import. So you can see that the, the effect that would have had on, on Portugal, uh, a really massive drop in frequency and, and blackouts in, in, in Portugal. As far as Spain's concerned, um, before the incidents, looking back at the figures, they got 60% solar, 10% wind. Um, so 70% um, variables in the system, 10% uh, nuclear and less than 1% coal. What the Spanish authorities are saying is that they lost 15 gigawatts of power in five seconds. So quite what, what they lost um, is, is not certain yet. Now, I've heard figures of up to 78% at uh, one stage of their electricity uh, coming from wind and solar. Um, there's a problem yeah. then with that, isn't there? Because wind and solar don't have inertia, like, uh, the, you know, inertia is like when you drive a car and you take your foot off the accelerator, the car still goes. 
uh, it doesn't stop suddenly. When you've got gas and coal and nuclear, you have got turbines that will keep running even if there's an interruption at a fairly steady speed, the system can cope. Wind and solar are not like that. Would that have been a problem that you could have lost all that e energy because suddenly, I don't know, uh, wind and solar stations start tripping, there's no inertia in the system, close, 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 bang, the whole system goes. Yeah, certainly with with over 70% of of variables in in the system, you know they're they're vulnerable to a, a, a major disturbance, which which then cascades th through the through the system. I mean they've they've they had just ten percent nuclear as as part of the mix and less than one percent coal, so th there was very little um, power there w with with inertia. Um, they would have got some from the French interconnector. But um, that appeared to have a problem, you know, early on in the in the piece as well. So they they didn't get the support from France. Um, so yes, the, the the system frequency, I mean, it fell to um, forty nine point eight five, very 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 rapidly. You're looking at the the frequency chart. Um, so massive uh, drop in in frequency.